Hey family, this is Kathy. Welcome back to the Salt and Light channel. I have another word for you from the Lord and the name of the message is One Day or the power of one day. Now, of course, this is a, um, a kingdom marriage, kingdom spouse message, but it is also about how God wants us to have intentional focus each day and take one day at a time. So again, the title of the message is One Day or the Power of One Day. And I also have a song at the end to go with it. So we're gonna start out of Matthew 6. <clears throat> And before I go there, um, the word intentional is jumping out at me again. And the word Lord said to me, intentional focus. And this is in each day. He wants us to have intentional focus, intentional teaching, blessing, provision, joy, and peace. And this message is coming out of um, a lot of the comments I have read in the comment section the emails I've been getting from many of you. Um, I just have heard so many beautiful stories, but I've also seen a lot of heartache and pain and struggle. And just know that the Lord hears you, He sees you, and He understands. But a lot of what I'm hearing is kind of becoming a common thread is, when will I know? When will I be with my kingdom's husband or wife? Or when will I know when I have this job? Or um, how do I know? And what God wants you to do is to, to focus on the day that you're in and not, I'm not saying don't have future plans and future goals, but sometimes, and this is what he's telling me, you can be so focused on the future that you miss what he's doing right now in this moment, not only in you, but in the person you're standing for, but also in your own life, your own character, your finances, your job, um, and God's doing the same thing in their life too. So we've got to know that we can trust him and relax and let him do his work. Like the Bible says, let faith have her perfect work and patience or let patience have her perfect work. And, and patience is, a, is not a fruit of the spirit, but patience is. It comes out of long suffering. <laughs> I know, I think the word long suffering. Nobody likes to hear that word. Nobody likes to hear the word patience, but impatience is a fruit of the flesh. It's a fruit of not being satisfied with what you have or not being grateful or having to have all the answers at one time. And over the years, God has taught me patience. Uh, even Jesus learned obedience through his sacrifices. Obedience is another fruit of patience because you're waiting on the Lord and you're being obedient to what he's telling you. And sometimes it takes a while. Now, don't get me wrong. Our flesh will kick in. But what God is doing in all of us, he's weeding out the fruit of impatience and the fruit of well, he wants us to be grateful. I'm, I'm hearing ingratitude or un ungratefulness. That's just remember the children of Israel when they were going through the wilderness, which was supposed to be an 11 day journey and it took 40 years. Can you imagine when God tells you to do something and he says it's only going to take a week, week and a half, two weeks at the most, and it takes you 40 years? It's because they either didn't follow the roadmap, but a lot of them were complaining and murmuring and fault finding. And we don't always want to hear these messages, but this is part of how God is developing our character and not only preparing us for the anointed, you know, marriage that he has for us, but also all the anointed kingdom assignments. Because, you know, our word is our bond and how we act and how we react in public and around other people it's going to say a lot for us. It's going to be like our calling card, our business card. Um, and you've heard me say in a lot of videos, you know, uh, we are living epistles read of men. The Apostle Paul said that we're living letters. People may not know Jesus, but they'll read us and they'll see, you know, our character and, and how we handle things. Now, again, we're human just like everybody else. A lot of people, some people think when you become a born again Christian or disciple, yes, the peace of God is in your heart, but your flesh still has to learn to line up with the word of God. So as long as you're trying and you're seeking, that's all that matters. So that's what the Lord told me. He said he wants you to become more intentional about each day and focusing on what he's doing for you in that day and the good that he's doing and what he's preparing for you like. And even, even get in the comments when you get a chance and 
uh, if this word is for you and just put one day and put in there something that you noticed today when whenever you heard this video or you hear this video notice um, write down something you saw God do for you so put one day and you could put um, financial breakthrough or, or I got a phone call or whatever you want to put if you want to so we're gonna go to Matthew chapter 6 and I appreciate all the emails sometimes it takes a moment for the uh, Wi-Fi to grab it but I appreciate all the emails that I'm getting, all the comments, all the questions, you know, no questions. Some people said, I, I don't really want to ask this. I'm like, don't eat, there it is. Don't even worry about it. Um, because no question in my heart, you know, that's how we learn. That's how we grow. I ask questions. I ask the Lord questions. I ask other people questions when I talk to them. And that's how I can understand the Lord will show me this is what's going on in their life sometimes just by the questions I he gives me to ask them because remember Jesus taught in parables and he taught a lot by asking questions he never would give a direct answer to those the hypocrites and the Pharisees but he would ask them like you know well what did Moses tell you or he would ask his disciples I know you know who they know who I am but who do you say I am so Matthew chapter 6 it's do good to please God <clears throat> and we're gonna talk about the prayer and one phrase sticks out Jesus said and when you pray you will not be you shall not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues or the churches and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men now that he's not talking about street preachers he's talking about back in them days they had the long hats and they'd walk around and want pe people to kiss their hand and they pray really loud and look around you know to see who's looking at them and things like that because Jesus said you have your reward you know what you do you should do in private between you and God so that they may be seen of men not of God assuredly I say to you they have their reward in other words they have what just happened to them but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will, will reward you openly. So what you do between you and God in secret, the Lord rewards you openly. Like, you spend a lot of time praying and working hard, and you finally paid off a debt, because the Bible says to owe no man nothing but to love him. And because of your diligence, you know, God blessed you with a, you were able to get a, you know, the, the purse of your dreams, or you were able to take a little mini vacation, or you've worked hard to lose weight, and next thing you know, you're asked to be a model. Just, God rewards you for your diligence. Um, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard of their many words. Some, he's talking about, well, he says the heathen, those are non-believers. But it's also, you could be around people and they keep praying the same thing over and over and over. You never hear anything new because what comes out of your spirit should be coming from your connection with God and your, your connection to the word and you're reading it. Because Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever's in your heart is what's going to come out, whether you're under pressure and pain and it's okay. It, it's not that you have to be perfect, but the word should be coming out of your, your heart. And um, kind of like if you see an accident on the side of the road, what's the first thing that comes out of your mouth when you hear the ambulance fly by? I just, I just start praying for him. And I say, Father, send your angels to go with him and your anointing and your protection and your salvation. And, you know, be in the midst of whatever they're going after and anoint the, uh, the first responders. So... Um, he said, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed or consecrated is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this, and this is the scripture, verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. And in some translations it says, give us today our daily bread. Um, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, our sins, or those who've offended us. And do not lead us into temptation, because God doesn't tempt, that's the devil. 
but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. For if you forgive men their trespasses or how they've offended or trespassed against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses or their sins, neither will your Father forgive your sins or your trespasses. Unforgiveness is another roadblock to healing, to restoration. You know, God is not going to give you a man or a woman of God who has been through the fire and they're processed and they're ready if you still have a lot of unforgiveness and bitterness to your past and then you try to take it into the marriage and they pay for what somebody else did the Lord wants to heal you of that because that's really unfair so vice versa if it came to you and you're like I don't even know what you're talking about after a while you get tired of paying for something somebody else did love and mercy sometimes God will have you help them through it but it's it's about learning to let go and forgive and when you can forgive that's another form of patience it's like lord you know what happened but i trust you to work it out amen so um in verse 25 is do not worry therefore i say to you do not worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body what you will put on is life not more more than food and the body more than clothing and he's talking about how he takes the birds of the air. So the scripture I want to get to is <clears throat> verse 31, Matthew 6, 31. Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And here's the scripture. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Or in other words, the Lord is saying, don't worry about tomorrow and what's going to happen tomorrow. You've got enough in today to deal with. And again, God wants you to focus on the power of each day. Because, you know, I, I heard a saying, he gives us the same 24 hours every single day. And this, and here's the example, one of my absolute favorite scriptures is Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases or stops. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Every 24 hours, God gives us a brand new batch of mercy. They are new every morning. So if the Lord wants us to focus on one day at a time by giving us fresh mercy he doesn't want us lingering in the past now it's okay to think about things and, oh i had such a good time yesterday but it's when you dwell on things and dwell on the negativity and, and yeah you know, sometimes you might have a moment where you cry about something from the past i i did that today i thought about someone and i i just saw like a little video and heard a song but that's healing but it's when you live in the past so much that you can't go forward it's you know you're you're thinking about maybe you're in separation from your spouse and you're thinking about all the good times you used to have well god wants you to give that to him and focus on what he's doing in the new new season and the new wine skins for you guys because when you come together in the spirit of god it's going to be a whole lot different and a whole lot better you may have been in the flesh back then and in the world or maybe one of you was walking with the Lord and the other wasn't or you could have been lukewarm. God wants you to focus on what he's doing today. He said, behold, I do a new thing, shall or will you not know it? That's Isaiah 43. So again, <clears throat> the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases or stops. His mercies never come to an end. That right there is a gift right there that his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So every morning when you wake up and you open your eyes and say, Lord, thank you for the new mercy you're giving me today. Because I used up yesterday's. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to go every single day without new mercies and without God shortening the days and without new faith? It's a blessing. So the Lord wants you to... Um, start looking at each day as a gift because life is a gift <clears throat> and say lord what is your heart for me today um 
as, as I was sharing with someone today, you know, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So ask the Lord. This is how you can delight in him. Is just say, Jesus, what, what are your desires today? What do you want me to do? What is your, what is on your heart? What is on your mind, Lord? <clears throat> What's my assignment? Sometimes he won't tell you anything. He, you might just feel him loving on you like I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling like a warmth, like an embrace. And, or he might tell you, I want you to, when you go to work, I want you to go talk to this person because they're having a really bad time and nobody really sees it, but I'm showing you and I want you to go to them or they might show up and knock on your front door. So just give your day to him and, and just focus on the fresh mercies and the goodness in that 24 hours. And look at the blessing of every day. When you start focusing on the good and the blessing, it's going to change your mindset, your outlook, and your perceptive perception. And you're going to say, wow. I mean, your perspective. Wow, God, boy, God really did that today. And I, I totally forgot about it. So, um, and he, he told me to write it down. He said, keep it simple. Kiss. Keep, keep it simple, sister. <laughs> keep it simple one day at a time. Don't overcomplicate your situation. The enemy will throw that at you. He'll say, well, how are you going to figure this out? And, you know, you, you used to have this, but you don't have that anymore. And where are y'all going to live? Go back and read Matthew chapter 6 when all this starts coming at you. I've come to the place in my life and my walk. Of course, I still I make goals and plans every day. I have future plans. But I have just learned to rest in him every day and wait you know, now there's times I do, I pray, I'm like, Lord, that my, my son or my family needs this to happen. So thank you. You know, would you send the provision or show me, show me how to do it, how you want me to do it. But a lot of times he just brings it right to me. So was I always like this? No, it took me a while to get here. And occasionally my old young, I'm not going to say my old young self, my old self before I learned all this would Oh, how are you going to do it? How are you doing? You know, we're having you run around like Chicken Little and how's, you know, when is this going to happen? When are we going to come together? When are we going to get married? Well, the Lord says, focus on the day that you're in and trust him to work out the details because he's in the details. We're not. And, and <laughs> he's always told me, he said, I appreciate your love, but pray and let me work it out. I don't need your help. All I need is your faith and your obedience. Um, so, um, I'm going to, before I read this song, I'm going to lead you to Christ. Anybody that wants to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Um, so, this is according to Romans 10, 9 through 13. Everybody needs a relationship with Jesus. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. God, God is calling you today if you're watching this video for the first time. If you know you don't have a relationship with Jesus or you're not in covenant with God or you're not where you should be or you need to recommit your life and quit straddling the fence, today is your day of salvation. Choose this day whom you will serve. The Lord's putting before you life and death, but he's telling you choose life. So um, Romans 10, 9 through 13, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto the to righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So he's saying, believe it in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, the Son of God. He died on the cross and God raised him from the dead. He said, you will be saved. So if that is you, I want you to just close your eyes. You can bow your head if you'd like, or you can keep them open and look up however you feel led to posture yourself before the Lord. I'm just going to close my eyes for a minute, and I want you to just focus on Jesus. And what is he telling you right now? So thank you, Lord. Okay, Lord, draw them in. There's some battles going on right now. Some people are resisting. I'll break that in Jesus' name. So, re so pray this prayer after me, and you're praying to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive all my sins. I repent. Come into my heart and save me. I make you the Lord of my life. 
I can't do it without you, Jesus. I need your help. There it goes. I believe in my heart, Jesus, that you are the Son of God. And I confess with my mouth that you died on the cross for my sins and God raised you from the dead for my salvation. So Lord Jesus, wash me in your blood. Save me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and baptize me in your fire. I give you my heart and my will in exchange for yours. I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. I felt a little battle right there before I started pray praying. I could see some, some demons trying to stop somebody, and they are broken and bound in Jesus' name. But if you feel you need to pray this prayer again, pray it, rewind the video when we're done, and you can pray it again. And if you did give your heart to Christ. I want you to put a three in the comments and that stands for Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity. And, or if you recommitted your life. Thank you, Lord. And if this word of, is for you and it resonates with your spirit, just put in the comments one day or the power of one day. And by you focusing on one day at a time, I'm about to cry because I'm feeling it from the Lord. He's, he's telling me, each, each day is going to get you closer, you two closer to each other, but it's going to get us closer to the return of Christ. So, uh, before I read the song, I just want to give a shout out, first of all, to all of you awesome subscribers. You all, we are already over 1,300 in like three months or less. So, thank you to all my subscribers. <clears throat> if you have not subscribed, just hit the little bell icon on the right side of the screen and hit the word all. Every time I upload a video, you will receive, it'll come to your notifications and you can watch it whenever you want at your leisure as many times as you want. Please like, hit the like button on the left side of the screen, a little thumbs up. So YouTube will put this in the algorithm and more people can get these messages and the prayer of salvation to help them out. Um, I also want to give a shout out to the members in the membership program. This is just a monthly seed you're sowing into the Salt and Light Ministry, and you get um, YouTube gives you loyalty badges besides your name. Your your name is highlighted in green whenever we do lives, and also um, when you put comments in the comment section, it, you will be recognized as a member. We have nine currently, so welcome. I'm thinking of nine giving birth in nine months. So there are three levels that you can join, and if it, you ever decide it's not for you or you don't, you can't do it anymore, you, you can always unsubscribe or, or disconnect from it. But I just want to thank all my financial partners and all of you who have sewed um, to Karen uh, L., Thank you for your seed in the super thanks, sis. And to Dana B, thank you for your Cash App seed. And for all of you who give through Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, super thanks, super chat. Um, there's just so many ways. And I just thank you all so much. from, And I thank you for your prayers and being here. And if you would like to become a part of the membership program, just uh, hit the join button and then it'll explain everything to you and I just sent um, a members only video out to them encouraging them and I'll be sharing it with you all so you can see what happens when you become a member and you know the prayer that I pray over the members but subscribers you are a member and it doesn't of the channel but it doesn't cost you to subscribe and you don't have to uh, be a member I just want to there, there's people that ask me well is it required to be part of the channel absolutely not it's just your faith and it's the way you process a monthly seed to the channel and in doing so YouTube thanks you and I thank you but I thank all of you so um, make sure I got everyone and less uh, Lisa Lisa W thank you for your super thanks sis and if you want to join my Facebook uh, ministry or page it's called be encouraged it's the, the word be like the little insect and there's a bee on, on each side so you're welcome to go on over to uh, Facebook and ask to join and I check it every day and I'll welcome you to the 
to the group. We had three join today from YouTube and I post on there every day and sometimes other people post. We celebrate your birthday. Uh, we celebrate new members. It's a prayer community. So if you have a prayer request, you can put it on there just like on here and everyone, people are so good about commenting, hey, I'm praying for you, I'll lift you up. And that's the power again of community and having people that pray for you all over the world because some people don't really have family they don't have people that they could go to but the uh, be encouraged in the salt and light family is a praying prophetic family and I I take every prayer request seriously um, to to God and if he tells me to tell you something I'll be sure to tell you so let's um, go over the song real quick and then I will um, close until the next video and the name of the song is for my good by Cochran and company I love this group C O C H R A N Cochran and company so it's called for my good and that kind of comes out of Romans chapter 8 <clears throat> how each day God is working everything out together for our good even if we don't see it um, And I'm grateful for meat messages and messages that change me because God does not want us to stay the same and he's preparing us and we are in our preparation. So the only thing that's dying, just think, it's like the video about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The only thing that's dying in the fire is what's holding you bound because the Son of Man and the Son of God is right there with you. It brought up another song for my good. For my good. It's very hot here in Florida, and I think we've already got our first hurricane out there at the bottom of the state. I've been sneezing all day, and when I sneeze a lot, that means it's going to rain. <clears throat> all right, For My Good by Cochran and Company. My life won't always go the way that I plan. There'll be some stuff that I won't understand. I'm going to stumble every now and again, but I know when I fall, I'm falling into your hands. You sh we sure are. His hands are big enough. I know you're holding everything that I see. You're sovereign all over my anxieties. You give me comfort like nobody else could, and I know you're working everything for my good. He always is. Every trial, every heartache, every letdown, you're raising it up for my good. Every season, every new day, every moment, you're making a way for my good. Oh, you're making a way for my good. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Sometimes it's hard to live the things that I believe. Sometimes my doubts still get the best of me. There's days I struggle to trust like I should. Still, I know you're working everything excuse me for my good even when your flesh doesn't feel it just say Lord I may not see it I may not feel it but I love you and I trust you and no one can do it like you I have told him that so many times every single day and every chance I get even through hell and high water and he always brought me through and he always brought a huge blessing out of it so just tell him how great he is and that you know he can do it and watch what he does <laughs> Oh, you're making a way for my good. So why would I worry? Lord, you are the great I am. I may not know what tomorrow holds, and that's okay. But I know who holds tomorrow in his hands. Every trial, every heartache, every letdown, you're raising it up for my good. Every season, every new day, every moment, you're making a way for my good. Every trial, every heartache, every letdown, you're raising it up for my good. And he repeats that every season, every new day. He's making a way in every moment. He's making a way for your good. So no matter how it looks, no matter how long it takes in human years, remember God is outside of our time. You know, he's in eternity. He created time for us. He's working it out for your good. He knows when you're ready. He knows when your spouse is ready. He knows where you're going to be living a year from now, just like where you're at now. He knew you were going to be there a year ago. 
So trust him in his sovereignty, like the song says. So sovereign means he rules over everything. It's kind of like, you know, in the uh, the older royalty and monarch times, they would say, and it's still true, I am your sovereign. And the young Victoria, she was yelling at her husband, Albert, because he walked out of the room. They had a fight. And he, he wasn't going to let her have her way. And she goes, she's 18, I am still your sovereign. <laughs> and he just kept walking out. And he said, yeah, and you're my wife. So just know that God is sovereign. And he, he sees it from the beginning to the end and trust his timing, trust his work, trust his way. Just love the way he moves because, boy, I sure do. I love the way he moves. So I love you all. I appreciate you. I'm praying for you. I see your comments every day. And just know God sees you. And I will see you all in the next video. And have a good night. Bye.